Hello. Today I'm going to tell you the story about Cedric. You remember him? The favorite stuffy toy or Smith. The one that he gave away. And the story is from this book, Tales from Moomin Valley. And Sniff, of course, uh, is kind of a sad character. He's scared and timid, and he main interest is, is to collect material things and to become rich. The other character in the story is Snuffkin. He's quite the opposite. He is a free spirit and a vagabond, spend all winters traveling, nobody knows where, and then he comes back each spring to the Moomin Valley. Snufkin like, uh, likes to, to play his harmonica and to go fishing. Material things are of no interest to him, and he only owns as much as he can fit in his backpack. He goes to story. Now, afterward, it's hard to understand how the small beast Sniff could ever have been persuaded to give Cedric away. Never before had Sniff done such a thing, rather the reverse. And moreover, Cedric really was quite wonderful. Cedric wasn't alive. He was a thing. But what a thing. At first sight, he was just a small plush dog, rather bald and love-worn. But a closer look showed that his eyes were nearly topazes, and he had a small genuine moonstone on his collar near the clasp. And furthermore, he carried an inimitable expression on his face, an expression that no other dog could have. Possibly the jewels were more important to Sniff than the expression, but in any case, he loved Cedric. And as soon as he had given Cedric away, he regretted it to desperation. He neither ate, nor slept, nor talked. He only regretted. It was Moomin Troll's fault, he sniffled. He told me that if one gives something away that one really loves, then one will get it back 10 times over and feel wonderful ever after. He tricked me into it. Evening fell. Everybody said good night and the lights were put out one after the other. Only Sniff lay awake, staring up at the ceiling where the shadow of the large branch was moving up and down in the moonlight. Through the open window, he could hear Snufkin's harmonica playing in the warm night down by the river. When Snuff's thoughts became too black, he jumped out of bed, padded to the window, he climbed down the rope ladder and ran through the garden where the peonies gleamed white and all the shadows were coal black. The moon was high, far away, and impersonal. Sniff sat down beside uh, Snufkin and looked unconsolably into the water. Hello, Snufkin said. Good thing you came. I've been sitting here thinking about a story that might interest you. I'm not interested in fairy tales tonight, Sniff mumbled, wrinkling himself up. It's no fairy tale, Snufkin said. It happened. It really happened to an aunt of my mother's. And Snufkin started the story, sucking at his pipe now and then, splashing with his toes in the dark river water. Once upon a time, there was a lady who loved all her belongings. She had no children to amuse or annoy her. She didn't need to work or cook. And she didn't mind that pe what people said about her and she wasn't the scared thought sort. But also, she had lost her taste for play. In other words, she found life a bit boring. But she loved her beautiful things, and she had collected them all her life, sorted them, polished them, and made them more and more beautiful to look at. One really didn't believe one's eyes when one entered her house. 
She was a happy lady, Sniff nodded. What kind of things did she have? Well, Snufkin said, she was as happy as she knew how to be. And don't interrupt me, please. Then one night it happened that this aunt of my mother's went down to her dark pantry to get a cold cutlet and she swallowed a large bone. She felt funny for several days afterwards and when she didn't get any better, she went to her doctor. He tapped her chest, listened to it, x-rayed her and shook her about and at last he told her that this cutlet bone had stuck crosswise somewhere inside her. It was impossible to prise it loose. In other words, he feared the worst. You don't say, Sniff said, showing a little more interest in the story. He thought the lady was going to kick the bucket and he didn't dare to tell her. That's about it, Snufkin agreed. But his aunt of my mother's wasn't easily scared. So she made him tell her how much time she had left. And then she went back home to think. A few weeks wasn't very much. She suddenly remembered that in her youth, she had wanted to explore the Amazons, to learn deep sea diving, to build a large, nice house for lonely children, to see a volcano, and to arrange a gigantic party for all her friends. But all that was too late now, of course. Friends, she had none. Because she had only collected beautiful things. And that takes time. She grew more and more sad while she wandered around in her rooms. Her wonderful belongings gave her new comfort. On the contrary, she only made her think of the day when she was going to go to heaven and leave them all behind. And the thought of starting a new collection up there didn't make her happy, for whatever the reason. Poor lady, Sniff cried. Couldn't she take at least one little thing with her? No, Snufkin said, that's not allowed. But now, dry up, please, and listen. One night, this aunt of my mother's lay awake, looking up at the ceiling and brooding. All around her stood lots of beautiful furniture, and all over there was lots of beautiful knickknacks. Her things were everywhere, on the floor, on the walls, on the ceiling, in her cabinets, in her doors. And suddenly she felt she was about to suffocate among all those belongings that gave her no comfort at all. And now the idea came to her. It was such a funny idea that this aunt of my mother's began to laugh where she, where she lay. All at once, she was feeling fit, and she rose and dressed and started to think. She had hit upon the idea of giving away everything she owned. That would give her more breathing space, and that's something that you need if you have a large bone stuck in your stomach and want to be able to think about the Amazons. How silly, Smith said disappointedly. No, it wasn't silly in the least, Snuff objected. Snufkin objected. She had lots of fun while she, was, while she was sitting thinking about what to give away and to whom. She had many relations and knew still more people, you see. That's quite possible, even if you have no friends. Well, she thought of everyone, one after the other, and she wondered what he or she would like. It was kind of like a game. And she wasn't stupid. To me, she gave the harmonica. Perhaps you haven't noticed that it's made of gold and rosewood. Well, she thought it out so wisely that everybody got exactly the thing that suited him and what he had dreamed of. This aunt of my mother's also had a turn for surprises. She sent all the things in parcels and the receiver had no idea who the sender was. They had never been to her home because she had always been afraid that they would break things. It amused her to imagine their astonishment, their thoughts and guesses, and she was feeling quite superior, like one of those little fairies that fulfill wishes in a jiffy as they fly along. 
I didn't send Cedric in a parcel. Parcel, Smith cried with bulging eyes. And I'm not going to die either. Snufkin sighed. You are the same as ever, he said, but still try to listen to a good story, can't you? Even if it isn't about yourself. And think of me a bit too. I saved this story for you, and sometimes I like telling stories. Well, all right. At the same time, something else happened. This aunt of my mother suddenly found that she was able to sleep at night. And in daytime, she dreamed of the Amazon and read books about deep sea diving and drew plans for the house for children no one wanted. She had fun. And that made her nicer than usual. And people began to like her company. Her rooms were becoming airier and airier. She sent off one parcel after another, and the fewer possessions she left, the lighter she felt. Finally, she was walking about in empty rooms, fearing, feeling rather like a balloon, a happy balloon ready to fly away. To heaven, Sniff observed dryly. Now listen, don't interrupt me all the time, Snufkin said. I can hear you're too small for this story. I'm going to finish it anyway. Good. By and by, all her rooms were empty, and this aunt of my mother's had only her bed left. It was a large canopied bed, and when her new friends came to visit her, it could hold them all, and the smallest ones sat up in the canopy. Everybody had a wonderful time, and her only worry was about the great party, which she didn't seem to find time to have. They used to tell ghost stories and funny stories all night. And then one evening, I know, I know, Smith said crossly, you are exactly like Moomin Troll. I know how it turned out. Then one evening, she gave away her bed too. And then she went off to heaven and was so happy. And the right thing for me to do is to give away not only Cedric, but everything I have, and then hand in my spade and bucket on top of it all. You are an idiot, Snufkin said, or still worse, a story spoiler. What I was about to relate was how this aunt of my mother's laughed so terribly at one of the funny stories that the bones jumped out of her stomach and she became absolutely well. <gasps> you don't say, Sniff cried. The poor lady. What do you mean, the poor lady, Snufkin asked. Don't you see? She had given away all her things, hasn't she? Sniff cried, quite uselessly, because she didn't die after all. Did she take all her things back then? Snufkin bit hard on his pipe and raised his eyebrows. You foolish little beast, he said. She made the whole thing into a funny story, and then she gave a party and built the house for lonely children. She was too old for deep sea diving, but she saw the volcano, and then she went off to the Amazons. That was the last we heard of her. Such things cost money, Sniff said, with a practical disbelief. She had give, given everything away, hadn't she? Had she, Nothing replied. If you had listened as you should, you'd remember that she kept the canopy bed. And this bed, my dear Sniff, was made of gold and simply crammed with diamonds and carnelians. The end. Then Tove Jansson adds a postscript. As for Cedric, Gussie made the topazes into eardrops for her daughter and gave Cedric black button eyes instead. One day, Sniff found him lying forgotten, forgotten in the rain and took him back home. The rain had washed away the moonstone, which was never found again. 
The sniff went on loving Cedric all the same, even if it now was only for love's sake. And that does him some honor, I believe. Thank you.